Reggae music is king's music. Reggae is a music of high order. Mm -hmm. Reggae is a music basically talk for masses of people. Rasta means you sight up his imperial majesty, Emperor Ailey I King Selassie, as a great taste as the almighty. Rastafari means you refrain from Babylon and all Babylonian ways and meditation of thinking and philosophies of Babylon. You drop it in that garbage pan and you take up philosophies of life, of truth, and hopefulness. Hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. Jamaica is Reggae's ground zero, the home and birthplace of the genre we know and love to bits. But every once in a while, artists from other countries show us that they can bring it just as hot and idle as the best of Jamaicans. From the likes of Alpha Blondie to Steel Pulse, Akai Becker, down to the fabulous, inspirational Dominican maestro Nacio Fontaine. It would be almost criminal to refer to Nacio Fontaine as just an artist. The man is a force of nature, loaded with a genuine love for humanity, reverence for Rastafari, and a mission to touch lives with his music. It's actually easy to claim to be a Rastafarian when you live in a free society, but when you consider that in Fontaine's home country of Dominica, there was a law called the Dread Act that made having dreadlocks illegal, you can imagine that being a Rastafarian while Nacio Fontaine was coming up means that you had to really believe in it. He embodies what it means to be a conscious reggae artist, with songs that are simply busting with inspiring lyrics and rhythm that make you break into a joyous skank. It's been way overdue, but now let's take a look at the amazing Nacio Fontaine. He was born in 1969 in Bagatelle, Cote d'Ivoire, a small village on the southeast coast of the Caribbean island of Dominica, to a Carib Indian mother and a father of African descent. He was the last of seven children, and his parents were really poor, so he had to drop out of primary school at a young age. But Nacio had an amazing talent for music, and couldn't stop drumming on milk tins, pots, tables, and everything that made sounds. When he was 15, he snuck out to peep at what was going on in the dance hall in his village, and he saw a reggae group called Chubby and the Midnight Rovers giving a fantastic performance, and he decided on that spot what he wanted to do with his life. He had grown up listening to Calypso and soul singers like Otto Redding, Sam Cooke and Marvin Gaye. But after watching the band, he began to take an interest in reggae music. He then started listening to and became heavily inspired and influenced by Joseph Hill, Burning Spear, Bob Marley and Jacob Miller. It was all child's play to Nacio until 1981 when he left Dominica and moved to the Caribbean island of St. Martin where his older siblings had moved to and lived. He had just turned 18 and began to work all types of odd jobs with a plan to save up money to finance his first recording session. It took Nacio five years of working to raise the cash and in 1986, he recorded his first single, Born To Be Free, a protest song about apartheid in South Africa. Without a record label, promoter or manager, Nacio single-handedly promoted the song by touring a number of Caribbean islands and the song caught on, becoming a hit in that part of the world and got a lot of airplay as well as selling over 5,000 copies, the biggest selling single at the time in St. Martins. With the little money he made from his first single, he went back to the studio in 1990 to record a mini album called Babylon Is Falling. This also made a great impression and got even more airplay than his debut single. Encouraged by these early successes, he went on to record a full album in 1992. But this time, instead of recording in St. Martins, he chose to go and record it in Jamaica. He went to the popular and prestigious Mixing Lab Studios in Kingston and recorded 10 amazing songs that would go on to be his album. But after recording it, he had no money to press records or distribute for promotional purposes. So he went back to St. Martin's disappointed to think on how he would get the money. But after a long time, he gave up on ever releasing the songs and kept the tapes. He went back to doing his odd jobs. But two years later, a friend visited Nacio and for entertainment, he brought out the tape and played it for his friend. After a while, the friend asked him, who's that playing? And when he said it was his music, his friend dogged him endlessly to go look for money and press the music into records. Fortunately, by 1994, the technology had changed and CDs were cheaper to press than records. He did find the money and travelled to the US and went to disc makers 
a CD manufacturing company where he paid for the pressing of 2,000 CDs of his debut album Reggae Power. This initiative led to him getting a record deal with US-based label Affiliate Productions and a US promotional tour in 1994. The album was released in 1996 and really blew up that year. It was selected by Reggae Roots International Magazine as the best album of 1996 and he was also nominated for the Tamika Reggae Awards and Canadian Reggae Awards in that year. The music video for one of the songs titled Wanna Go Home also earned him great reviews and acclaim by Rockers TV and The Beat Magazine. The video showcased his devotion for Rastafari and was filmed in Jamaica on a plot of land that Bob Marley had donated to Nabingi gatherings. It was actually filmed during a sacred ceremony held to mark Ground Nation Day, a Rastafarian holy day that is set aside to mark the visit of Emperor Haile Selassie to Jamaica and was the first time the ceremony was being caught on film. Nasio achieved this by convincing the Rastafarian elders that he wasn't there to make money off the ceremony but to take Rastafari to the world. He released his second album, Revolution, in 1999 and that album made him an even bigger international star with strong commercial and critical acclaim with 12 excellent songs with heavy conscious content in tracks like Black Tuesday. Remember earlier in the video we talked about how having dreadlocks was a crime in Dominica for a while. There was a law called the Dread Act and Rastafarians were heavily oppressed. It was even legal at the time to kill a Rasta or lock him up for 48 hours without trial. The song was a strong condemnation of an atrocity that took place in those dark days. The album featured other great songs like Truth Will Reveal and Jar Glory. His next album, 2003's Living in the Positive, was another great album with the lead title track undoubtedly the best in that compilation. It's one of the best known albums and firmly cemented its place as an international reggae act. And by the time his 2006 album called Universal Cry came out, he was already touring Europe and the United States with some of the biggest names in reggae like Gregory Isaacs, Israel Vibration, Tony Rebel, Vincent McLean, Steel Pulse and Culture. Interestingly, Kenyatta Hill, son of Culture's Joseph Hill, told an incredible story of how when his father died during their European tour in 2006, it was Nasio Fontaine that came to him backstage in London and encouraged him to take over his father's band as lead singer, a role that Kenyatta Hill occupies till this day. The most influential and successful artist to come out of Dominica, Nasio Fontaine was awarded the Cicero Award of Honor in 2007. He is still one of the most in-demand artists globally and is on heavy demand for tours in the US, Africa and Europe, not to mention the Caribbean where he's from. In his more than four decades of music, he's remained strictly devoted to his roots and his life mission to help others. Through the Nacio Fountain Foundation, he carries out charity work on his home island of Dominica and other parts of the Caribbean. To him, music is not just for entertainment, but a tool to uplift the masses. In his own words, for me, the purpose of the music is that it can comfort the people, it can uplift them and guide them through all of life's struggles, trials and tribulations. It's amazing how despite him not getting formal schooling beyond the age of 14, he has and continues to write some of the most intelligent, concise, evocative, inspirational reggae songs. For those who haven't heard Living in the Positive, I guarantee it's a great example of what Nasio Fontaine is all about. Another of my personal favorites is the excellent Crucial of the Universal Cry album. We often cite Jamaican artists like Luciano and Sizzla as heroes of the Rasta Renaissance that started in the mid-1990s when a handful of roots reggae artists began to push back against the slackness and worked hard to bring reggae back to its roots. But Nacio Fontaine and his amazing records since 1994 also forms a part of that movement in the Caribbean. He's an inspirational figure, a true Rasta and one of the most beloved reggae musicians of the 21st century. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and we'd love to hear from you. So please leave a comment in the comment section. And until next time, Jobless.